This channel brings daily updates about the San Francisco 49ers. Help US reach the goal of a thousand subscribers so if I were you, I would click the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell because it has amazing updates and you didn't want to miss it, right? Come on, San Francisco 49ers, yes. The leaders of the San Francisco 49ers have been candid and direct about their aim to alleviate some of the burden on tight end George Kittle, an essential figure in the team. Demonstrating this commitment, the Niners didn't hesitate to take steps to bolster the tight end position. After failing to acquire restricted free agent Brock Wright from the Detroit Lions, the team moved quickly, signing Eric Saubert this past Monday. However, even with this maneuvering in the free agent market, the management of the San Francisco 49ers still shows a latent interest in further strengthening the tight end position through this month's draft. This was highlighted by the recent virtual meeting held with Louisiana University tight end Neil Johnson, as reported by Aaron Wilson of KPRC2. Johnson, coming off a standout senior season, set new personal records in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. With an average of 12.8 yards per reception over his college career, it's undeniable that he's drawing interest from several NFL teams. Among them, standout recruiting dinners with the Commanders and Patriots, along with a virtual meeting with the Denver Broncos. Furthermore, an invitation to participate in the Dallas Cowboys local pro day attests to the visibility Johnson is gaining in the professional football scene. George Kittle, undoubtedly, has been a cornerstone in the 49ers scheme, evidenced by his All-Pro selection last season, where he amassed over 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. However, the need for greater depth at the tight end position is undeniable, given that no other player on the team has managed to contribute significantly in terms of receptions and yards. The departure of Charlie Warner, who moved to the Atlanta Falcons in free agency, leaves an even bigger void in this regard. With Kittle's contract expiring in 2026, the 49ers' leaders are aware that it's necessary to begin planning for the future. In this regard, the potential inclusion of Johnson on the roster demonstrates not only an immediate concern for the present, but also a strategic long-term vision for the tight end position on the team. The San Francisco 49ers, renowned for their cunning on the NFL field, find themselves facing a crucial strategic situation in the upcoming draft. With the 31st pick in hand, the team is exploring all possibilities to strengthen their offense and enhance the skills of quarterback Brock Purdy. Under the astute observation of Grant Cohn from all 49ers, the franchise has initiated a series of contacts throughout the league, probing the opportunities for draft movement, especially if any of the most coveted talents drop within a reachable pick range. In this context, the name of Brock Bowers, the talented tight end from the University of Georgia, emerges as a promising option for the 49ers. Bowers, often compared to the acclaimed George Kittle, stands out as a player capable of adding even more firepower to San Francisco's attack. Envisioning a duo formed by Bowers and Kittle, both prominent figures in the position, surely ignites the imagination of fans and team strategists alike. Bowers' achievements in his recent college season are a testament to his potential. Recording 56 receptions for 714 yards and 6 touchdowns in 2023, he solidified his reputation as a formidable force on the field. His performance over three seasons at Georgia, starting in 2021 with an impressive 56 receptions for 882 yards and 13 touchdowns, followed by a campaign of 63 receptions for 942 yards and 7 touchdowns the following year, has established him as one of the most talented players in his class. However, Bauer's brilliance has not gone unnoticed by NFL scouts, and his position as one of the top receivers available in the draft suggests that his presence may be fiercely contested. The 49ers, aware of the value he would add to their team, face a considerable challenge in trying to acquire him. The possibility of Bowers being selected within the top 10 picks adds an additional degree of complexity to the negotiations, requiring a substantial investment from San Francisco. Despite already possessing an impressive array of weapons in their passing game, the potential loss of wide receiver Brandon Ayuk next year prompts the 49ers to seek reinforcements. 
Anticipating future needs, the team is attentive to opportunities to strengthen their depth of talent and maintain their competitiveness at a high level. Thus, the interest in Bowers is not just a quest for immediate talent, but also a precautionary measure to ensure the continuity of the team's success in the near future. Taking on the role of defensive coordinator for a prestigious team like the San Francisco 49ers, especially at a crucial moment like the playoffs, is more than just a mere promotion or a change of position. It's a monumental challenge, a test of skill, leadership, and the ability to perform under pressure. Nick Sorensen, the man tasked with this Herculean mission, is now at the epicenter of a storm of expectations and demands. In recent NFL history, the 49ers have been a constant presence in the playoffs, a beacon of consistency and excellence in the tempestuous sea of competition. This status was not easily attained. It was forged with sweat, talent, and tireless work ethic. And it's within this tradition of success that Sorensen now finds himself elevated to the position of guardian of the 49ers' defensive wall. While the team may maintain a solid foundation of talent and strategy under the brilliant Kyle Shanahan's guidance, the change in defensive command cannot be underestimated. The departure of Steve Wilkes, a veteran of the industry, in favor of Sorensen's rise, certainly raised some eyebrows and sparked debates among experts and fans alike. After all, why tinker with a formula that was working? This question hangs over Sorensen like a dark cloud, a shadow of doubt that he must dissipate with tangible results. After all, while the 49ers' defense may not have been the weak link in the previous season, there's always room for growth and improvement. It's precisely in this relentless pursuit of excellence that the pressure rests on Sorensen's shoulders. Inexperience may be his greatest adversary on this journey. Despite being an internal member of the team, the fact that Sorensen has never led play calling in such a widely visible arena as the NFL playoffs adds an element of uncertainty to the equation. Does he have the nerves of steel necessary to make quick and accurate decisions under the intense heat of competition? The pressure, therefore, is not just an abstraction but something tangible, a force that will shape the destiny not only of Sorensen but of the entire 49ers team. In an environment where every play, every decision can mean the difference between glory and oblivion, the responsibility on the defensive coordinator's shoulders is monumental. However, the human factor in this equation cannot be ignored. The players, the warriors who march into battle on the field, represent not just brute force but also camaraderie and loyalty. Sorensen may find comfort and support in these comrades in arms, a safety net that can cushion the impact of the inevitable storms that will arise on his journey. The players' confidence cannot be underestimated. If Sorensen can win their hearts and minds, he will have a solid foundation on which to build his defensive reign. After all, in the game of American football, individual talent may shine, but it's the collective unity that prevails in the end. Therefore, while the burden on Sorensen's shoulders may seem overwhelming, he is not alone in this battle. With the support of his teammates, the guidance of Kyle Shanahan, and his own unwavering determination, he is equipped to face the challenges that lie ahead. Pressure may be a constant on his journey, but with it comes the opportunity to achieve greatness, to leave an indelible mark on the 49ers' legacy and NFL history. Now it's your time to interact with us, leave in the comments what you thought of the video, and, as usual, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the notification bell. This channel brings daily updates about the San Francisco 49ers. Help US reach the goal of a thousand subscribers so if I were you, I would click the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, because it has amazing updates and you didn't want to miss it, right? Come on, San Francisco 49ers, yes. The San Francisco 49ers, in a crucial phase of the 2025 offseason, find themselves facing a scenario full of challenges and strategic decisions to be made. Among the various impending free agents, guard Aaron Banks stands out, whose journey from his selection in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft to establishing himself as an above-average player in the league has caught the attention of many. With the imminent arrival of the next offseason, the 49ers roster faces a series of potential shortages in crucial positions, ranging from receivers to defensive backs. 
Such a situation raises the pressing need to prepare for possible winds of change while also seeking to strengthen the team for the upcoming challenges. Within this context, the question arises regarding the priority of extending Banks' contract before he becomes available in free agency. Considering the current landscape of the offensive line, this proves to be a decision that requires careful consideration from the coaching staff and the front office. Historically, the valuation of positions within the offensive line has evolved, with tackles being long considered the premier assets. However, guards have gradually gained prominence in this scenario, as evidenced by the recent increase in contracts for this segment of players. The rise of guards in the market leaves open the question of to what extent it is justifiable to invest in a top-tier contract for banks, considering the possibility of contractual inflation due to the growing positional importance. A crucial factor to consider is the dynamics of free agency, which allows players to attract multiple suitors and consequently drive up their market values. In this context, managing banks' contract becomes even more complex, requiring a meticulous evaluation of the costs and benefits associated with his retention. The 49ers have a history of mixed strategies regarding player spending, prioritizing investments in certain positions while seeking more affordable talent in other areas. Over the years, the team has shown willingness to shell out hefty sums for offensive line players like Trent Williams and Mike McGlinchey while taking a more economical approach to the guard position. However, faced with market uncertainties and demands, it is crucial to consider not only Banks' individual performance but also the broader team context and available alternatives in the market. With a large number of potential free agents in other key positions, the 49ers face a series of tough decisions as they try to balance the salary cap and maintain the competitiveness of the team. Ultimately, the decision to extend Aaron Banks' contract should be guided by a careful analysis of the team's goals, market trends, and available opportunities. While his contribution is undeniable, it is possible that the 49ers may explore other options, aiming for a balance between retaining current talent and responsibly managing financial resources. Few players can boast of enjoying a vacation on a majestic cruise ship, only to return to solid ground and take to the field to participate in a crucial phase of the playoffs, as Logan Ryan had the opportunity to experience when joining the 49ers team. Now, once again, he is ready to return to the deck of the ship, but this time to sail towards the next adventure of his life, retirement. Experienced safety Logan Ryan announced on Tuesday his decision to hang up his cleats, officially ending an 11-season journey in the NFL. His stint with the 49ers began last season, in December, when he was called upon to fill the gap left by Talanoa Hufanga, who was placed on reserve due to injury. During his brief time in San Francisco, Ryan played in eight games, including the thrilling playoffs, where he had the opportunity to compete on the grand stage of the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. Demonstrating his versatility and experience, he stood out as a player of extreme importance, especially in slot situations. This notable contribution from a veteran in the advanced stage of his career is truly admirable. In the last month, Ryan faced the dilemma of being a free agent, which may have narrowed down his future options in the league. Perhaps this was the sign he needed to make the tough decision to retire. His farewell from the field was marked by an impressive playoff run, culminating in a Super Bowl appearance as a starter. The 49ers' choice to opt for Ryan over Ambry Thomas to fill the vacancy left on the team proved somewhat questionable, given that Ryan is primarily a safety player. However, this choice did not have a devastating impact on the team's overall defensive performance during the game. Ryan's departure resonates as a reminder that the 49ers are facing a pressing need at the safety position. Although he was not a cornerstone, his departure highlights a gap in the team. Tashawn Gibson, a starter in recent seasons, remains a free agent and is already showing signs of advanced age. Furthermore, Hufanga is still recovering from an anterior cruciate ligament injury, leaving G.I.R. Brown as the only certain option, but still in an early stage of development. How the 49ers plan to fill this gap left by veterans like Ryan will be an interesting narrative to follow in the coming months. Although he showed flashes of talent during his rookie season in 2022, the 49ers believed that an offseason of intensive training and technical refinement would help him shine in his second year. 
Unfortunately, that didn't materialize. Jackson never quite found his footing on defense. For that reason, the 49ers opted to acquire Randy Gregory from the Denver Broncos and later Chase Young from the Washington Commanders. Last offseason, it was emphasized that 2023 would be a make-or-break year for Jackson, and clearly, he didn't meet expectations. So, what's Jackson's future with the 49ers in 2024? It's unlikely that he has much of one. The team's confidence in Jackson has waned, and it's hard to see how they could continue to invest in his development. It would be a different story if Jackson had shown some progress in 2023, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. If Jackson had a promising future, the 49ers probably wouldn't have traded for Gregory and or Young last season. Additionally, the signing of Leonard Floyd indicates that the team is no longer willing to wait for a quarterback pressuring specialist, preferring to take action immediately. Honestly, it's hard to envision Jackson becoming a significant piece on the team in any capacity. The year 2024 will be a time for him to reflect, with little to no prospects for the future with the team. George Kittle finds himself grappling not only with the sting of defeat from his alma mater Iowa's loss in the Women's NCAA Tournament National Championship game, but also with the added weight of fulfilling a bet with Debo Samuel. The two San Francisco 49ers stars engaged in a friendly wager over Sunday's final showdown between the Hawkeyes and Samuel's alma mater in South Carolina. Samuel recently confirmed the stakes during an appearance on Bleacher Report's courtside couch, with the loser compelled to don the opposing team's jersey for a game during the 2024 regular season of the 49ers. As the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks triumphed over Iowa with a score of 87-75, Kittle now finds himself gearing up to wear a Gamecocks jersey. For Samuel, the victory caps off a weekend where he seems to have developed a knack for coming out on top among his peers. Samuel, alongside linebacker Fred Warner, threw out the ceremonial first pitches at the San Francisco Giants' home opener on Friday. While neither covered themselves in glory, Samuel, unlike Warner, at least managed to connect with the receiver of his toss. His triumph over Kittle was far more definitive, and undoubtedly, he'll relish in the victory when the 49ers reconvene to kick off their off-season training program later this month. Now it's your time to interact with us, leave in the comments what you thought of the video, and, as usual, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the notification bell.